Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to talk about the basics of dynamic lighting. I already have a video on real-time ray tracing in Unreal but I'm just going to go on a deep dive into how to use those features and how to use certain techniques to light interior rooms because it's not as straightforward as an outdoor scene. Now if you're interested in me doing a tutorial on how to do bake light maps uh, just please leave it in the comment section below the reason why i'm going with dynamic lighting is because i see that's the future of this engine if you look at the unreal engine presentation for unreal engine 5 that was pretty much what they're going towards is try to avoid static lighting try to avoid vague maps that being said that technique still has its uses so if you'd like me to talk about that please leave it in the comment section below but for now, let's just talk about dynamic lighting. All right, so what I did is I got rid of all my lights, my post-processing volume and everything that I had lighting this situation, except for what you're gonna get as default. So if you, get, if you start a new project as default, what you're gonna get in terms of lighting is skylight, which I took out because we're gonna talk about that later on, but you're gonna get a light source, which is right here and you're going to get your sky with an atmospheric fog. So this is pretty much what you get with the default project unless you choose an empty project. But let's start from this setting. Now, as you're seeing here, let me turn on the editor. I have a bunch of decals here too, giving this scene a little bit of life. So if you wanna know a little bit more about decals, there's a link to a video that I made about that. It's actually the video before this. When it comes to light going in, right now what we're seeing is just the direct light. So this is a regular directional light, a directional light, it's an infinite source of light. That means that it's just going to go everywhere until it hits a geometry that's blocking it, which is why I can move it around and it doesn't affect it. The only thing that affects the light source is rotation. So as you can see, there you go. But right now what we have is direct light. We don't have indirect light and indirect light is that bounce that goes around. Whenever you have light like this coming inside a room, you're gonna see the whole room lit up because that's how light works in the real world. It bounces around and it creates a lot of indirect light. That's not how it works in engines, so we need to force it in other ways. That being said, real-time ray tracing is allowing us to do those bounce lights and get a more natural indirect lighting. What I'm going to do now is bring in a post-process volume. So you can bring in a post-process volume right here. Just leave it here. By the way, uh, since we're doing real-time ray tracing, make sure you have all those ray tracing settings. Uh, I have a video for that on how to get ray tracing on your scene. Please make sure you watch that if you have not gotten a ray tracing, pro a real-time ray tracing project, because that's what we're working with. And make sure your light is set up to movable. All right, so moving on to the post-processing volume, this is how we are going to start using the real-time ray tracing. Now for this to work, what we need to do is we need to tell this post-processing volume to be infinite because otherwise the only way that this post-processing volume is working is when you're inside of it. So let's just check this here. That means that this post-processing volume is going to work on all the scene, not just the space that it's occupying. Now after that, we're going to go to rendering features. And underneath, we're going to go to ray tracing global illumination. Now you're gonna see that we have three types of properties. So I'm just going to enable them all. And you're gonna see that nothing happens. If I increase the samples here, nothing happens because it's disabled. We have two types of ray tracing global illumination. One of them is brute force, which let's see what happens if I click here. And as you can see, this instantly lights up. Let me go to the game view so I get rid of all of these icons. You can, you can see that after I switch to my ray tracing global illumination brute force, this scene actually lit up. And that is because now ray tracing is doing the other part of global illumination. Now for brute force, which from what I've read on the documentation and videos that I've watched from Epic, 
this is the most accurate type of lighting and what we need to do in this case is we can decide how many bounces of this light we want so right now we have only one bounce so that means the lights coming through here and it's bouncing on the walls one time if we do two times you're gonna see that brightens up the scene let's go something more exaggerated like eight okay that that doesn't change anything that means that there's a, always a threshold of how many bounce lights we can get and that means that the more we bounce the light it doesn't matter it's not going to change our scene because uh, bouncing two times it's all that's going to affect our scene in this case so if you want to get a little bit more light and you already have two bounces you can always go into your light source and we're going to increase this to let's say 100 and you're going to see how this thing brightens up all right so this is a quick way to brighten up your scene however you're going to see some noise around here and you're going to see that the scene is a little bit choppy it's because brute force it's because it's the highest quality it's the most accurate it's also the heaviest and because of that i think brute force was created for rendering so if you're just creating still images for portfolio brute force could be a good way to do things otherwise this is actually going to uh, be killing up your performance and we just need to bump this down to one and as we can see that's still very nice so but we are getting a lot of noise back here and over here as well. The way that you get rid of that noise is by increasing the samples per pixels. So if we run this up to eight, you're going to see that the noise gets reduced a little bit. Not so much. So we probably need to increase it all the way to 16. With 16, it's almost gone. Uh, there's still a little bit of motion here, but it our scene, it's a little bit more manageable even though it's a little bit choppy because of all that sampling now let me go back to my post-processing volume and talk about the other type of real-time ray tracing that we have here and that is final gather so when we switch to final gather and let me bring this down this is quote unquote the cheapest version of the real-time ray tracing now you're seeing a bunch of things floating all around this area and that is because uh, it's trying to calculate the light so the bigger the this noise here that means you just need to increase your samples when it comes to final gather the amount of bounces actually doesn't matter and you can see how fast the scene got just by switching to final gather if I increase the bounce to 16 See, that doesn't change anything. So for final gather, bounces are not going to do a thing. What's going to help you out is the samples per pixel. In this case, I'm going to up it to 16. And you're going to see how that noise changed. And it actually kind of went away, not completely. But it does help the scene a lot. So a big part of that noise just went away. So let's increase our light source. But as you can see, our scene, it's only lit uh it's not as lit as it was with the brute force the brute force was actually bouncing the light a lot more so let's do 500 and you can see this lights up the scene a lot the problem with just increasing the intensity of the light source or the directional light sorry is that at some point you're gonna get this now i can see my scene a lot better now but it does feel like the sun is right next to this building so this doesn't give us a natural look this actually gives us a, a very ugly look and it's really really bright you could play with the exposure here but that won't help you too much so what we're going to do is we're going to find a happy medium by using other types of light so not just directional light but we're using other types of lights in the windows that are going to help lit up the room without actually having our directional light pretty much looking like a nucle nuclear explosion next to the building. So I'm just going to bring that back to 100 or even less, let's do 50. And what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding rectangle lights. So rectangle lights, I really like these lights. Uh, as you can see here, we have several types of light. Uh, there is point light. I haven't used point lights in a while. I don't like using point lights because it's really artificial. 
and it does take a lot of resources. Spotlights is mostly for when you have those lamp posts or if you have an actual lamp up here. And rectangle lights are the more versatile kind of lights. If you use an offline renderer like V-Ray, uh, you're going to be very familiar with these kinds of light because they do look like V-Ray lights. So I'm just going to go back to my editor mode so I can see all my icons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rectangle lights as lights that are coming through the window. So I'm just going to get it up all the way here and you instantly see how much that is helping. But I'm just going to make it the same size as my window here. And with the rectangle light, um, rescaling doesn't do anything. So if I go and do this, you're going to see that this just changes the attenuation radius. I want to change this shape right here. The way you change that shape is by going here into the source width and height. So I just change my source like this and go. Uh, I think this is just right. Okay. Now you see how much our scene is being lit right now a lot better. So let me just toggle it so you can see what's up. Check it out. That really helps to light our scene without actually blowing up the direction light, which again, it looked really terrible, like the sun was right next to us. And because brute force is so much more expensive, then we still need to go to this little tricks here of getting some light in other ways. So I'm just going to increase it all the way over here. And as you can see, I have this part right here. I'm just going to tell it to switch it to movable. That message goes away and I'm fully dynamic right now. Now I think there's very little light coming in here because I have too many planks. So there you go. Now let's put one over here. So I'm going to hold alt so I can clone that light. Actually, before we clone that light, let's edit some of the, some of these features. So they're all the same. Uh, I think eight is fine for now. What I like to do when it comes to uh, the color of my light, I like to play with the temperature as opposed to playing with the color, unless you're doing something sci-fi. Uh, the temperature is something that's easy to find. You can go online and see the temperature of various lights. If I want to turn the light warmer, I go a lower value. If I want to turn a light cooler, I go higher value. So just to give you an example of a cooler light would be, let's go to 8,000. And let's turn off that directional light. So you can see that our light is a lot bluish. So if we go to 2000, you're going to see that our light's pretty much red. All right. So that's how temperature works. Now I'm going to go with 5200. That's more of a warm ish light. And as you can see, there is a reason why I need the directional light, because even though I have this light right here helping me out with the extra global illumination, I don't have that effect of the light coming through the window. So that's why I do need both lights. So let me uncheck this one. And there you go. We can actually uh, diminish this down a little bit. And now let's keep working with this light. I'm going to actually hold alt and take out another one here. There you go. So as you can see, it's looking really nice. And if I turn that off, you can see that having those lights there really helps out the extra illumination. Just because I cannot be using brute force, it's it's still a very slow solution. I would use brute force whenever I do need to have that, you know, whenever I'm doing stills. But for now, I'm just going to be using final gather. And for this one, I'm just going to try to make the shape of this window. There you go. All right, so I'm going to go to my camera and get rid of all those icons. And as you can see, 
this actually brightens up the room. So if I go to my rectangle lights and I turn them all off, you're going to see that this looks so much darker. I could still just use the directional light by turning on the root force, which does a lot with the bouncing light. But another way and a cheaper way to achieve this is by turning on these two, these other lights that I have here helping me out with the global illumination of this whole scene. So again, just a little trick, something to help you out uh, because it's not straightforward, like lighting an exterior scene, you just drop in a sky and you're done. You don't have to do anything extra. In these kinds of scene, if you want to use dynamic light, then you will have to resort to using those little tricks like adding those uh, lights. And, and one of the nice things is you can get this volumetric feeling over here that's really nice. Now one thing that's really important whenever you're doing ray tracing, if you turn ray tracing off after the fact so you didn't make a ray tracing project from the get-go, you need to make sure that you are casting ray tracing shadows because if you don't then you're gonna see that see this little diffuse over here it's very easy to tell. If I turn off ray tracing shadows you're gonna see that that turns into a really harsh kind of shadows and the other way that I like to soften off a little bit of these shadows right here is by increasing the source angle so the default source angle is like this and it's really tight sometimes it's not the most realistic so what I like to do is I increase the source angle a little bit let's say to two and you get that little bit of uh, diffuse I think it's called penumbra the in between complete light and complete shadow so there you go. That's how to quickly light an interior scene. And that's kind of like helping out that uh, dynamic lighting factor. If you were doing static lighting, you will be working with the indirect light intensity and you have to build your lights. And that's how you figure out what kind of um, GI or global illumination you are getting for your scene. With dynamic lighting is a little bit easier, but sometimes it's not as straightforward just because of the fact that we don't have a complete solution that's 100% accurate when it comes to the bounces. So we require to do these little tricks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the channel. Uh, please leave a like, share the video around, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.